donated $500 towards our herring adoption project. Uh, the herring adoption project was a way for us to offset the costs of the pit tagging project that Andy's going to talk about. Um, and they donated $500 towards um, the purchase of, uh, towards um, that we, so we could have adoptions, 175 adoptions that could be um, given out, adoptions that could be given out to the, the classrooms. Um, and so we distributed 175 of these adoptions to students at all grade levels in Falmouth, everything from elementary school to high school. And so we had the schools participating were T-Ticket, Mullen Hall, Morris Pond, Lawrence School, and, high, and the high school. Plus, we also had two classrooms in um, Bourne participate. Um, and this year, uh, we also set up a website where not only the students in the classrooms, but also the general public could actually see where their herring was headed. Um, as the herrings are tagged, they sent off a signal to an antenna, um, and then we were able to upload this information to a website. And this way, the, the the students and the general public could find out where their fish was and where it was moving, um, how it was moving through the system. Um, tonight we have one of the teachers who participated in this project. And she's Lucinda Keith. She teaches at um, the Borndale um, Elementary School and she teaches the third grade. So if you want to come up, please, Lucinda. I'm really used to teaching people that are a lot smaller than what you are, so I don't know how I'm going to do in front of all of you. Um, I will have to say that being a teacher, we always want to do things that kids enjoy, and having the common core, sometimes it makes it a little bit stilted, but this actually tied in perfectly because one of the things to teach in the third grade is the life cycle of an animal. So it was wonderful to be able to say, that's why we're doing this. So um, to begin with, the name of my class is Awesomeville too, so you can obviously tell them they're a great teacher. Um, it changes each year. So this is just um, from my class. They wanted to thank you. They actually wanted to be here as the fourth graders to come to be able to share, but it's a little bit past their bedtime. So the first thing that was very exciting to them I went and I met with Lou, and I also spoke to Mr. Cooper, and they had told me a lot of different things about it. So this was when our um, fish actually arrived, so they were very excited to see the actual data of everything. And because we're in the third grade, what we had to do was we had to put up the map. And so Lou and Mr. Cooper had sent me this gorgeous map, we put it out in the hallway, I also had individual maps for each one of the kids. We had to name the fish, and thus we had to also make fish and decorate them in glitter and <laughs> rhinestones. Um, and so at the very beginning, they started to watch all these fish, and we kind of had some talks about the perils that fish may have. That we may have some fish that may not make it, and that's just part of the life cycle. Um, they also, I told them that there might be some fish, which I'm not sure whether this was true, but Wendy said this to me and it worked really well, that maybe some of the fish were actually tagged as they were leaving. So maybe they really didn't die, it's just that they were on the way out when they were tagged. Um, so we did have a couple little burials in our classroom also. Um, so when they first got this map coming from Bourne, they had no idea. Where is this place? What are you talking about? So then what I did is, I don't believe in telling anybody anything. They have to explore. So you can go to the next one. So what I did is I found this map, and we just started talking about the whole watershed in general. And when we started that, then that led to what is the watershed, what is an estuary, so that led into a whole lot of more um, language for them. What was perfect is at the exact same time, I was taking a class at the Bukoit Estuary, and it tied in with the Wampanoags. So through that, I was able to take all of my learning from both of those and tie it into this. So we did a whole study of the estuary. Then 
they still, of course, had no idea. I wanted their parents to just put them in cars and bring them down and we were going to take a walk. It really didn't happen. So I went out and I walked the whole bog and the paths are wonderful. So I took pictures of everything. I took a lot of videos and I wasn't able to upload them because I had deleted them. But this <laughs> let them be able to look at where the fish had to go. Their first question to me was, oh my gosh, there are no trees. What are they going to do? That water is hardly even deep. So they started getting really concerned about how their fish were going to make it through this waterway. Um, the next one, I kept going back and taking pictures and videos. The one day that I arrived, I wish it would work, but the video won't come up, was watching all of the osprey and the seagulls. They were in a panic. All the kids were like, oh my gosh, not bubbles, not bubbles, no, no. <laughs> so I watched all of that. I then filmed right here, and they were able to see, which was just really cool. I was right on one side of, I think it's Sam Turner or John Parker, and I was filming all of the herring that were right there. The seagulls were behind me, and the fish were kind of going forward and then going backward, and the, fish, the kids thought that was like the coolest thing. It was like playing a game, and they were trying to hide. And the whole time when I filmed it, they kept saying in class, no, 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 don't go, don't go. It's not go. And I was like, okay, guys. So I, it became really addictive. Every weekend I had to go out and do another filming of what was going on at the logs. So the next one. One day when I was there, was that you? Okay, you look different up here. <laughs> it was very exciting. You helped me collect my water that day. This was probably the most important thing. When I explained to them that we were adopting fish, of course, first they thought fish were really coming to the classroom. <laughs> then when I told them, no, they were going to put little incisions in them and put little tags inside, and there were the antennas, they got very, very upset. So that day I came and I filmed you actually putting the incision in and then watching the fish swim away. They cheered. They were very excited. <laughs> the fish was fine. And so that was a really fun thing for them to see what was actually happening. And they couldn't believe that those antennas were actually going to track them. Then, as I said, it was the exact same time that I was taking that course. So I went up to the Wampanoags. They had their festival at the exact same time. So during that time, I told the kids, earn extra gold stars, <laughs> go to the um, Wampanoag Festival so that you can see how they celebrate the herring. Also go to different places. So one of them went up to Middleborough, one of them went to Bourne. They threw everything. I also went, this is a picture of, I don't know whether any of you know her, her name is Granny Squanet. She's one of the elders in the tribe. And she told me the oral history of the herring and how they have these stories very similar to the way that kids see it of trying to go up the river and being saved. So um, she shared with me a story. The kids then wrote their own stories and I shared them back with her about what it was like to be a herring. Um, I think that's all from that one. Then from the Wampanoags I also learned how to make these fishing nets. So the kids went ahead and we made little miniature fishing nets. Um, then they also learned that the herring were celebrated as the beginning of spring for the Wampanoags. And so what they do is that lets them know that it's time to start planting their three sister garden. So of course we had to have a three sister garden, which of course tied in with the standards of plant life. So we went ahead and we planted. I explained to them that the herring were put down in a ceremonial way facing east, north, south, and west. We couldn't put herring because I told them that we cannot go out and catch herring, only the Wampanoags can. And so what they did is they thought we should probably put sardines in there. <laughs> so um, we did slide in some sardines. I don't know if they'll see this, but I took the sardines up. So, um, Anyway, it was a very exciting time for them. 
The other thing that happened is because of the fact that they knew that people could not fish for herring, one of my students decided to do a police arrest. <laughs> and they went to one of the herring run. He told his mom, I don't think that that gentleman over there is a Wampanoag. We may want to call dad. <laughs> so um, the mom sent me an email and said, I'm glad that you're teaching him responsibility. <laughs> um, the next one. This is my kids. The questions that they came up with blew my mind. They looked at where the water started through the mapping, and they said, okay, Miss Keith, if they're out there, that's ocean water. This is fresh water. Our freshwater fish cannot swim in the ocean. How is this happening? What's going on inside of that fish? And where does the freshwater end, and where does the salt water begin? So because I wouldn't tell them, I went out and I took water samples from five different places at the river, the ocean, in the pond, and then in the brackish part, right on 28. Mm -hmm. So I collected all those. I got the air temperature and the water temperature, and then brought everything back to class and said, you have to figure it out. So I gave them, on the next one, hydrometers. So they tested for the salinity in the water, and I was really, really proud. They had five different locations. They nailed all of it. So um, when I went and told people, everybody was like, you know, teaching the third grade, and I'm like, it's amazing what they can do if you tell them they can. So um, the little boy that's over here was so curious about the fish, he said, can I do an extra research project? So he then went ahead, this is the poster that he made, and he went ahead and he researched everything about the herring so that he would know everything about it. This is um, when we found out that some of our fish possibly made the, the chain down here, but they were okay with that. And this is the thing that I was sharing with Wendy, and I'm so excited to be able to tell her, tell my class when I get back, what the woman before had talked about, because my class really embodied all the problems of being a herring. And so throughout the summer, I sent them different updates, and I gave their parents the links to the Kunameset River Trust so that they could go on Facebook and look at those. When they found out that they were granted $430,000, the kids were all contacting me. What does that mean? What does that mean? What's going to happen? So I want to say to you, not only was it a wonderful experience and a great way for me to be able to teach the life cycle of an animal and the plant cycle and all of those things, but also it gave the kids the idea that they should be concerned with where they live and that they actually can make a difference. Because the kids in my class really believe that part of that $430,000 is what they helped to do by the information that they were finding out. So I am, like, I usually cry. <laughs> this is good for me. But um, they are going to be so excited to know. And I was sitting in here taking notes over everything that's going to happen, and they'll be so happy to know. So I want to thank all of you, the counters and everybody else, you really have helped to make this a learning experience for them. So thank you.